I'm actually using this book as a stand right now, so let's see if you can guess what it is. Actually, it's in the title, so that was kind of dumb, but it is going to be a stand, and now I'm removing it, and this was a terrible intro, but uh, I'm almost done, and here we go, last block, and you can see now, I got the book. Swapped it with a Shakespeare, that's a good idea. Hello everybody, it is Anna. Today, I'm gonna be doing a review of the book, Way of King. This has been one of the biggest, most hyped books of the entire fantasy genre in the last 10 years. Man, this thing is massive, and I've been waiting to get into it for so, so long. Actually, let me grab the bigger book. So I've got the massive book here, Way of Kings. I've got two editions because I'm great, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and review it because I really, really enjoyed this giant entry into my fantasy library. It's been a marvelous adventure, and I really wanna talk about why it's so great, why it's gotten all the praise it's gotten, why I think it doesn't deserve some of the praise it's gotten, and its implications for the future. We've got some great stuff coming along. Keep watching. The Way of Kings is the first book in the Stormlight Archive, and it is a hefty book. It stands at 1,200 pages on a paperback and about 1,000 pages on a hardback, and it's incredibly heavy. So if you want a light book that you want to just carry around with you, maybe this works, but this took me two months to read, so it's not exactly your ideal pick, but it is a really solid book if you want to get into like a really deep, solid world. And you get, you know, it's one of the biggest fantasy series out there. So if you want to get into this, that would be a wonderful thing. I'm going to make the assumption right now that the people watching this are either people who have finished the series or finished the book and want to see what other people think of it and have finished all the other YouTube videos because I've got to be like the millionth. But uh, maybe you're one of those people. Maybe you're one of the people who've just subscribed to me and just want to see what I think without going too much in depth. If you haven't read the book at all, don't worry about that as well. You'll be able to follow along. Just, you know, go with the flow. This book has massive notoriety just because of its author, Brandon Sanderson. This man is a legend. He has been writing fantasy books forever. He's been writing the best of the best. Mistborn series down there. Haven't read that yet. This is the only book in the series I've read so far, and I'm reading Elantris at the moment. So uh, I've got some decent experience with him. I've read the first book in Mistborn. Um, not my favorite thing. I think I read it in three stars. But this has been massive improvement. I think one of the biggest parts that this thing shines in, and I think this is going to be the massive biggest part of my review, which is the scope of this book. It has been enormous, uh, an enormous adventure, just a giant feeling of wow that I've experienced while reading this book and, I, and that's one of the very few books that's been able to do it to me. You know, you know, we've got Lord of the Rings which has been a whole new level of wow. This thing came close and that is way more than any other book has ever come. Instead of being one of those books like uh, King Kingdom Chronicles, this book actually goes in, in and explores the entire world. It really feels like this is a massive continent that really exists, and we're really going along understanding what it means, what these people are, what's going on up north, what's going on down south. We really understand the world, and it doesn't just feel like we're confined to a little space. And that's one of the big things that I want to praise this book for. It really has a grandiose nature. Within the book, we're given this massive map of like what's going on that is obviously hot chocolate stained, but uh, yeah, it's, it's great. It's a real world and it really feels big because there's this world has been developed so intricately. Like it's not just that we're going around the world feeling like it is this massive thing. We are actually going through something that's very realistic, something that actually has a style, a different types of people going on up north and all that kind of stuff, a different cultures. The culture and world building in this has been phenomenal. One of the best I've ever seen. This might, the world building in terms of cultures and people, I think might even outrank Tolkien because this is just such a next level incredible way of creating world building in, inside of your book. It's just amazing. And it's not just this world that we're growing accustomed to. We learn of the past, the millennium of history that we've got. Millenniums, many thousands of years of history. We learn about what comes in the future. We've got this massive arc that we can just feel coming along. I don't want to say what it is, but you do know what it is. It involves, uh, okay, I won't say that, but we do know what kind of this massive plot is going to be kind of about. And it's really, really interesting just to see how intricate this world building is. I hear that he has 400,000 words of world word building, which is longer than this book. It is easily, this is just over a thousand, there's a thousand pages of just, of just work, okay? And if his world building is bigger than this, we know it's a really, really strong world. Because, you know, you don't just have world building for no reason. He's created a whole new species, new plants, new, it's amazing just what he's done with this. And the characters, oh god, the characters, they're so, they're, oh my god, it's great, it's just wonderful. 
their arcs, the arcs of these characters are just so original, so interesting because they're actually plotted out. They're so interesting, stuff keeps happening. So many points of conflicts. We do have three, arguably four or five characters that we're following at this time, and each of them gets a really, really strong arc, a really strong understanding of what's going on. They gain some kind of a victory, some kind of a loss by the end of the book. They get so much done. It feels, I, I don't know how, it doesn't feel like 400,000 words. It doesn't feel like a thousand page book. The amount of stuff that gets done, honestly, I would call it a 700 to 900 page book. But you have to understand that this isn't just one character, although it does focus on one character technically with a backstory. We do get three characters, three massively important characters that we have to follow across this massive span of time, across this massive world, through this massive, just all the stuff that they're doing. And to make it feel like it's 900 pages and really well developed, Dude, that's, that's a really big compliment because it feels like it was such a small book and not much happened, but so much did happen. So much really went down and it feels like a natural progression of time. Characters were just wonderful, phenomenal. Each of them had incredible arcs and I loved all of that. The plot itself, it was really, really good. Uh, I wouldn't call it exceptional in too many different ways. Of course, the ending is as good as any Sanderson ending. The incredible ending with the Sanderson avalanche, just amazing. I, I'm not the biggest fan of that kind of stuff, but I do know that it's wonderfully loved by everyone, and I'm not a hater against it. I'm just gonna say, not my favorite thing, but I, I'm totally cool with it, and it was, it was fun. The plot points in this book have been especially massive because we're completely deconstructing what this world has been made up of, all the secrets of the universe. It goes, it dives deep into all kinds of stuff. So if you really, really want a book that dives deep into the most intricate, most interesting, hardcore details of this massive world, this is the series you want to get into. First book, it really does feel like a introduction or a setup to everything else, which is where my personal feelings have lacked on it. It really does feel like just a setup, a damn good setup, but a setup nonetheless. It has been a very slow buildup, although it's been very interesting. We've been just introduced to so much stuff, so many characters, so much uh, history that, you know, it, we've really been bogging down the story. And it has been bogged down a lot, which is saying something for Sanderson, but it's been bogged down enough that I've noticed it, but the story still progresses really well. But we have been able to get through almost all the world building. All that's remaining is just some very intricate details that we might not understand yet, we might not need to understand yet, that we shouldn't, that haven't, hasn't been revealed to the characters yet, stuff like that. So look forward to a little bit more sluggish moving, but it is a really interesting, flow of events. And that is kind of where I do drop my review from, you know, a uh, perfect 10, because everything I've said so far has been raving about it, to closer to a 9.8 or 9.7, because it's just such a setup that, you know, if it wasn't a setup, it would have been so much better. But you can't avoid it, and I do want to drop points just because it happened, nonetheless it happened, and even if you couldn't avoid it, it happened nonetheless. So I have to drop a couple of points on it, but not too much because it was done really well for what it was worth, and it finished off quickly and it was done, it was done good, so I'm not gonna do that. That has been the main overview of the story, but there's one logistic thing that I do want to touch on before I finish up. This book, the not the, not the big one, the big one is apparently okay in this, but the mass market paperback, Dude, like there's spelling mistakes on every page. This thing is horribly edited, and I mean horribly. Because in other books, you know, I read it, I may find one spelling mistake if I'm really, really lucky. This one, I found one on every chapter. It was insane, there's so much. There's whole Wikipedia pages dedicated to how much is wrong with this book. And it's so annoying because as a reader, I am very much in the verge of not trusting the book. Of course, I need to suspend my disbelief. And the thing is, if something interesting happens and I'm like, oh, I don't believe it because it's so interesting, it's so cool, something happened. And then, you know, I, I know that there's been a lot of spelling mistakes or if you, you put in a name and I'm like, okay, is this supposed to be a word? Is this supposed to be a name? And I really, I'm very paranoid in terms of books. I don't trust books that much because of course an author could make a mistake, but that is what you're not supposed to do. You're not supposed to do that at all. You're supposed to be trusting the book with every inch of your being. You've got to be trusting it. And, you, and anything that the book does is supposed to be completely what it wants to do. There are no mistakes. And because of that, it really pushes the book forward if that's true. 
But in a book where there are mistakes, you have to doubt everything that you read. You have to reread stuff over again and you want to take everything with a grain of salt because you don't know if it's completely true, if this character is really spelled that way, if this is a word or if this is some kind of magic, you know, and, and if this is a weird grammar thing, if this is, I don't, if I, if a bunch of stuff happens that you don't understand fully and that really becomes a problem when you're not trusting of a book, which you should be. You shouldn't be completely trusting of every book, but that is kind of the intent of a book. You want to be trusting of it, and this kind of breaks your trust in that way. I'm not gonna pull out any specific way or any specific spelling mistake. You gotta look that up on your own because there's so much, so much online about it. But that is what I wanna leave you with. It's very, it makes me mistrustful of the book. The story itself has gotta be a 9.7, but with just the spelling mistakes, dude, I gotta drop it to like a nine. There's, it's just so annoying to read so many weird spelling mistakes that shouldn't have existed but I am gonna go ahead with the story and call it a five out of five just because of how good it was how elaborate the, the characters were just incredibly intricate the plot was so well developed and so much conflict happening at the same time world building was off the charts man we were using it to its full extent we've got history we've got people we've got cultures we've got so many traditions it's incredible what this book has done. I do want to go ahead and preface this by saying if you want to read this book, make sure you're a lover of epic fantasy. It's got to be epic. You want to have big scope. I thought I loved big scope when I started this book. Turns out it's not my favorite thing in the world because I was reading Name of the Wind or its sequel uh, of the Name of the Wind, Wise Man's Fear. And I found that I really, really enjoy a book that's really self-contained, that doesn't have a lot of world building elsewhere. That's kind of my forte and I really, really love that. Unfortunately, Malazan doesn't have that, so mega oof. But this book right here is really expansive and although it's not my it's not something I hate it's not my forte it's not my favorite thing in the world so just to be known that it might not be to your particular taste and it is a very much expansive world that pushes it to its limit in terms of what the average reader can consume an average reader can consume this but it does get difficult at times to stomach all of it but if you can take it it's probably good for you I think this book is labeled an adult book but uh, my sister who is very very young has been reading it and she absolutely loved it so you know this is a total it's a book for any ages and it's been wonderful reading it myself go ahead anybody any age fantasy lovers can read it just uh, the biggest thing that i want to say is you can't read a big book don't go for this if you're not a big fan of expansive giant books don't go for this that's all i have to say and that is my review five out of five for this brilliant book thank you sanderson i'm gonna be starting the next two books really soon actually because air my sister really wants to finish it off so i've got the two books right there and i am gonna finish uh i'm gonna finish one of the the old the wise man's fear read pet cemetery by stephen king stephen king finally i'm gonna get back to that and then these two books i'm gonna binge them both and review them both so that you guys can get those reviews as well because i know this is going to be a fairly popular review i guess i don't know so i hope you enjoyed this review and if you did please slap a like down below and comment that you subscribe because i'll 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 thank you for that please i've gotten so many subscribers mate like peace and turmoil i don't know if elliot shouted me out because i've been looking for that but I, I don't think she did which would be you know wishful thinking but um apparently i appeared on the sidebar i'm one of the most viewed videos with a review of her book so thank you to all the new subscribers i'm sure you'll be seeing this because you subscribe to Elliot, you like Elliot's book, you might be liking this book as well. So um, yeah, I, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Thank you everybody who's been subscribed. We hit 50 subscribers. Woo, that's, that's pretty cool. So uh, thank you guys for all of that and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.